Hey guys, it's about 4.30 in the morning, got a full tank of gas, about 500 miles to go, and a wad full of Benjamins. Let's start a grand adventure. Well, here we are, 20 hours and a thousand miles later. So what did I do? Well, I met up with a couple collectors. Saw some interesting stuff, had some interesting conversations, and came home with this. So what is this? Well, for those of you who are uh, members of my Patreon, you know exactly what this is, because I've been talking about it for the past few weeks. For the rest of you, well, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've seen me work on all manner of televisions, uh, all the classic 40s stuff, Zenith Porthole, uh, Dumont Doghouse, uh, Big Light Admiral, uh, and the newer stuff, the uh, Predicta sets, uh, doing color roundies lately a little bit, finally got a Sylvania Halo Light, etc, etc. So what would excite me? What would get me going at this point? Well, what is the one type of TV, early TV, that I've never talked about, never worked on, never shown. Well, it's one of these. It's a pre-war set. What's a pre-war set? Well, post-war set. That's what we're all familiar with. The VHF channels 2 through 13, 525 interlaced lines of video, etc. That all started in late... Uh, 1945 as World War II wound down. Well, what about before World War II? Yeah, companies were tinkering with TV before um, the start of World War II. Yeah, you can go all the way back to Farnsworth in 1927. Now I'm talking electronic television. Uh, Farnsworth demonstrated the first working electronic television system. Uh, I do believe it was in 1927. And there were plenty of other contributors after that that were tinkering all around the world with making all electronic television. And uh, some of you may be familiar with in the United States in 1939 at the World's Fair, RCA showed off a whole line of TVs, a 5 inch, a 9 inch, a 12 inch, TRK, TRK9, TRK12. And they did market them and sell them to the public in 40, 41, and then war started, uh, well, or the United States entered the war and suspended uh, domestic production of commercial products and shifted the wartime effort and all that stuff was mothballed. Now there were other companies too, uh, Dumont, Philco, uh, Andrea, whoop, hang on. So there were other companies that were tinkering with uh, TV in the late 30s too, but they were really expensive, they were really large, it didn't really catch on. The very limited programming, limited coverage area. And there were other companies tinkering a little bit too, Dumont, Philco, GE, Andrea, and others also. Had some prototypes, limited production runs. Thing is, uh, the TVs were huge, crazy expensive, Limited programming, limited coverage area, so they didn't really didn't do well. Well, this isn't one of those. A few of those sets were made and fewer exist, but this is something even more special than that. I'd argue, depending on your definition, this is the first television made in the United States. But what do I mean by that? Well, I mentioned Farnsworth had a set back in 27, and uh, RCA and others were tinkering in the early 30s. But, none of those were put into production. None of them were made on an assembly line. They were one-off prototypes or experiments in the lab. This is the first set that was actually assembled, where they made a number of them. Best I, I've seen so far is they made a 100 of these. So what is this? This is an, R, uh, an RCA RR, I believe it's 359B to be specific. They made two versions of this. The first earliest had a 9-inch CRT and came out in 1936. 
A short while later in 37 they switched to a 12 inch and they called it the B version and that's what this is. This is what RCA called a field test set. So 36, 37, of course there was there, there were no TV networks, there was no television, very few people were even familiar with the term. Well, RCA wanted to see, is this thing going to work? Is it going to be viable? They wanted to test a number of things like transmission, coverage area, reception quality, image quality, all that kind of stuff. So they made 100 of these, gave them to, I imagine, employees, engineers to take home. They set up a transmitter and they tinkered for several years. And the results of this is what led to those TRK sets in 39. But this predates them. This, this is a really cool, really interesting set. Now my original plan was to unload this and, and go over it in detail as soon as I got home. But it's so late now, that's not happening. I'm way too burned out. But while well, it's fresh in my mind and I'm excited about it, I wanted to talk about it. So here's a bit of a look at it. So what, what's so... I find so technically interesting about this set is this was made before there were any TVs really, so there were no TV tubes. They made this using radio tubes. So for example, for the horizontal output tube they used Type 42s, which you're probably familiar with as audio output tubes in 1930s radios. The damper tube, there were no damper tubes, so they used the Type IV or 1V half-wave rectifier tube and so on. For the IF, they used 6D6s or something like that. And they were really, really pushing things beyond their design specs. That will become more evident when I unveil the top chassis behind that, but I'm not going to do that right now, because all this stuff is fragile, it's in rough condition, you can see the cabinets de delaminating, so... That's so why I said I'm not unloading this, it's all slushy outside, it's 2.30 in the morning, so it's going to wait, but here's a little brief look at it. So, there weren't, any, there weren't even any picture tubes. The very first ones that came out in 36, they had green phosphor, they were basically they were sort of like oscilloscope CRTs, although they were magnetically deflected. This CRT, which is currently in the passenger seat, um, is... Very similar to a 12 AP4, which is what the TRK-12s used, but it's uh, like a prototype 12 AP4. I don't know if it's good. I sure hope it's still good, um, but if it's not, they're not the 12 AP4s are common by any stretch of the imagination, but if this one's a dud, at least they exist, and with time and effort and money, perhaps one could be acquired. Oh, that's we're getting way ahead of ourselves. So, anyways, this is the main chassis, the power supply chassis. It's crazy heavy. Uh, Brew Force Widowmaker, yeah, the CRT runs on 6,000 volts right off the mains. It's like a neon sign transformer. It's one of these boxes that puts out 6,000 volts at one milliamp or something like that. No flyback transformer. This predates that kind of stuff. Um, there's only a few tubes. I think it uses two. 5Z3s or something like that. Let's see these old school filter caps. So, because the electrolytics back then were still pretty primitive, I think some of these cans are going to be giant filter chokes to do most of the power supply filtering. And I say it's all radio tubes, so I think I got a bunch of 2.5 volt filament tubes in this thing. Ah, uh, yeah, so. Uh, it's rough. Put it this way, if it wasn't rough, it was, if it was in great condition, I would have never been able to afford it. Um, so, as I said, we'll, we'll go over this in more detail. Uh, I'll, I'll leave you off with a few bits of info about this set. Uh, there are 14 known to exist. Ten of them are in museums scattered around the world. There's one in Moscow, there's one in Tokyo, there's one somewhere in Germany... Several in Canada, the Smithsonian's got a couple, the American Wireless Association has one. Four are with private collectors. I am now one of those four. So there's three other collectors in the U.S. that have these. There's also one at the Early Television Museum in Ohio, and they have the early type, the 36. 
There is no Sam's Photo Fact for this. There is no Writers for this. There's no really published RCA service info for this. All I have is a badly photocopied thing of a few pages and a partial schematic that's cut off and has no actual component values on it. So if I have any hopes of ever getting this to work, I'm going to need a lot of help from the community. So I'm hoping I can hear from the handful of other people that have one of these. Uh, or I can talk to some museums and see if anybody's got um, service info. So the one in Hilliard, Ohio, the early TV museum, has been restored. And the guy who restored it is actually the guy that I bought my RCA uh, PCS 741, the big projection set. Uh, but he did it quite a while ago, but uh, I have already reached out to him, and I will again to see uh, if he can lend some insights. And I only know of one other one that's been restored. The rest, I'm pretty sure, have not been, and probably never will be. So what am I going to do with this? Well, one thing that bugs me about uber-rare sets like this is... Exactly what I was just saying, how little documentation there is. Most museums, like the Smithsonian has two of them, they don't even have a photo of it. It's not out on display. They're just buried in a warehouse somewhere. And that's what happens with a lot of high-end collections is people, whether it be it art or whatever, they spend a fortune on it and then it gets buried in their warehouse, in their storeroom, in their private museum. And nothing's documented, it's not shared with the world, it's not photographed. So there's very, very little info about these. So one thing I'm going to do while working on this is I am going to document, photograph, video, share everything. And I'm hoping to enlist the help of other people in the community. Like, I may very well have this cabinet refinished by a professional. And, uh, and other, we will probably need to fabricate some other parts or wh whatever, whatever might come up. I'm hoping to make this kind of a community effort, and I want to share the information, the knowledge with everybody about what's discovered while this set is being worked on. So that's going to be it for now. You'll be seeing a whole lot more of this as time goes on. Uh, at least I want to get this inside soon. I already got a space for it so you guys can get some sense of it. But uh, let me tell you a little bit about what you're looking at here. This is the front of it. And there are six controls that stick out the front. The tuner would be there, and you look through this window, it's a continuous tuner. The CRT points straight up, and there's a hinged lid with a mirror in it. You tilt it at 45 degrees, and you watch the image in the mirror. The CRT is so long, you can see it in this box here. Now, it's not quite this long, but it's a very low deflection angle. It's a very long CRT. So rather than having a cabinet that's four feet deep, they make one that's four feet tall and they mount this vertically and you look at it in a reflected angle. So right now I'm going to bring that inside right now. We will unbox it and take a look at it in the next installment as well as the chassis on this. And we'll talk a little bit more about the condition issues and some of my immediate concerns about uh, what I'm going to need help on. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.